We're here today looking at a remnant marsh in New York City and trying to understand the history of this marsh and how much carbon it stores. And unfortunately, it tells a story of erosion with sea level rise. This particular site, I think, shows right in front of your eyes what happens to marshes if we don't preserve them. Because right in front of our eyes, we see sea level coming up and uh, forming eddies around this particular site. And we're here taking a sediment core to tell us uh, when this marsh formed and what the sedimentation rate was through time. But we also want to know how much carbon is being stored. And it turns out that peat bogs and marshes and wetlands store a lot more carbon than forests do, almost 50 times more. When a forest grows, it's taking up carbon and storing it in the trees. The marshes are doing the same thing. What happens in marshes is that if it's cold and it's wet, they're preserved, just like being in the refrigerator. So if you have a marsh that's healthy, it has all that carbon since it began. It just builds up over time. If we lose that marsh, if it erodes and goes back into the river, then that, that carbon gets degraded by the bacteria in the water, and at least 70% of it is thought to go back to the atmosphere. So we know that it's really important to understand how much they're storing and how to preserve them. So we're, we're building a chronology to understand lots of things, the carbon storage, the human impact, and really just understanding the local history and tying it to our record. And then putting that carbon story into a bigger picture of New York City marshes, the whole East Coast, sea level rise, and trying to, you know, fill in the puzzle. I think whenever we know more of the background of something, you understand better how to preserve it or restore it. I love wilderness, and what I see is, in front of my eyes, sea level changing and marshes being <laughs> destroyed. And what I realize is that it's important to preserve these marshes for their carbon storage. So I've become a climate advocate <laughs> in that way. I think I spend a lot of time trying to preach that message because a lot of people don't understand what marshes are and why they're so important.